and in this video we'll see a social sign on between salesforce and slack so let's talk about what is a social sign on so people usually confuse social sign on with single line single sign on but uh, with social sign on we use typically with the social sign on we use the third party authentication providers which allow our salesforce org to access protected third party data and this sso solution is co called as social sign on because we are using the social media sites so let's say users uh, a user has to log into the salesforce org with their username and password they'll use an external authentication provider like facebook twitter linkedin google slack etc and uh, we can also use paypal amazon as the external provider uh, based on their uh, configuration so uh, social sign on is ass uh, especially useful uh, when you want your customer to be able to log into your experience cloud side without having to create a new username and password so uh, in our experience cloud side we'll give them an option to log in using a third party provider uh, in this tutorial we are going to use slack but you can use uh, any of the sites mentioned above so customers can log into an experience cloud site using their facebook or linkedin account etc so we we are going to use open id connect so uh, by default, Salesforce offers some predefined authentication providers. Uh, we will see what are the, who are those. Uh, now, uh, if uh, Salesforce uh, is not providing some predefined authentication provider, we can use the OpenID Connect protocol, uh, which is built on the top of the OAuth 2.0 protocol. Uh, this provides an additional security layer. Uh, the o OpenID Connect protocol, and we can use uh, any authentication provider, uh, any third-party authentication provider, right? So with OpenID Connect, uh, we uh, OpenID Connect is built on the top of OA 2.0 protocol and uses an additional JSON Web Token called as an ID token to standardize areas that OA 2.0 leaves up to the choice, such as scopes and endpoint discovery. Uh, it is specially focused on user authentication and is widely used to enable user logins on customer websites and mobile apps. So now uh, in this, uh, let's see a demo between Slack and Salesforce. So what will happen is we'll have an experience cloud site in say a site in Salesforce and we are going to enable the Slack login for that site. And once the user logs in, uh, let's say a cus uh, customer community user logs in. So a and a contact will be created and that contact will be associated to that user. And uh, in the end, you, uh, the user will be able to log in successfully. So let's start. Uh, the first step uh, for this demo is we'll have to go to api.slack.com and you'll have to log in. Uh, after you log in, you can click on create an app and uh, uh, just uh, click on from scratch. Name the app as Salesforce Slack SSO. Choose your workspace. Uh, I'll use this workspace, create app. Uh, so now we have created our app successfully and we have got our client uh, ID, the client secret, which we will be using in Salesforce. Uh, so this is how you can create a app. I'll use my already predefined app, which I have created previously. So I've created the Salesforce SSO app. Uh, I have my client ID, the client secret here. Uh, just one more thing which I want to enable is just click on OAuth and permissions in the left sidebar. And here, just provide in the redirect URLs here. So I have provided redirect URLs for uh, the uh, my domain URL, the uh, lo generic login.salesforce.com, and the site URL. So uh, you can, I'll show you how you can get these URLs when we are in the Salesforce org. And after you add these redirect URLs, just click on save URLs, and you are done from the Slack side. So now, uh, what you will do is. Uh, go to the Salesforce org in the setup in the quick find setup type auth providers click on new connect. from the open id connect we'll get this screen uh, now let's fill on fill in the details just type slack here uh, get the consumer key and the consumer secret from the app uh, just go to basic information and get the client ID and the client secret, just copy paste that and put it here. For the authorized endpoint URL, uh, just put this URL, 
uh, slack.com slash open id slash connect slash authorize for the token endpoint url just put this url and i'll give these urls uh, in the description so you don't have to worry about that for the scope just give the scope as email open id and profile uh, for the registration handler click on automatically create a registration handler and execute registration click on the uh, the icon and click on your username and then save it so uh, we are done from this uh, this side so i have already created one auth provider i'll open that so uh, this is my already created auth provider so i have given it the consumer key and the consumer secret i have provided these urls i'll provide these urls in the description and i've already created this uh, rec uh, handler class and uh, we have uh, got these uh, sso urls here if you can see and for uh, our experience cloud sites also we have got these urls so now let's uh, uh, go to an all sites uh, just in the setup type all sites and it will redirect you to the screen so i have created this uh, partner community so and i've named it partners like sso uh, community so this is the community now I, as a user i want uh, as a administrator i want my users to log into this community using slack let's say we, are, we want to provide them an option of using slack since we have created the uh, auth provider what we will do is we'll go to uh, near to our uh, uh, next to the partner community url just click on workspace in the workspace go click on administration in the administration click on login and registration and enable the slack checkbox here uh, select the slack checkbox and click on save right and uh, now just go to the members in the members uh, provide in the partner community user or whatever profiles that need to have access to this community so currently i'm only seeing the internal profiles you can click on customer to see the customer profiles and or click on partner to uh, see the partner profiles right so select all those profiles which need to have access to this community and click on save so copy the copy this url i'll go to an incognito window and i'll go to, click on this url so see, you can see the URL is the my site name slash partner URL. And at the bottom, we are uh, getting an option to uh, log in using Slack. Just click on Slack. So now it will ask you to log into your Slack account. Uh, you have your username and password. I'll just log in with mine. So now uh, I'm re being redirected to this screen. So it is saying that Salesforce SSO is requesting permission to access the Sam Ahuja Slack workspace. And what will they have access to? They'll have access to my email address and my identity. So I'll just click on allow. And we are able to log into the, uh, the community. And you can see this is the user that is that got created. Uh, so now I'll show you the uh, class. Uh, I'll click on the auto created reg handler. So what happens is like when I use it. So I'll just go to VS Code and to show this. So uh, we have two methods, the create user and the update user, right? So uh, if we have uh, uh, if we haven't already logged in, then create user method will be called. And if we have already logged in, Previously, then update user method will be called. So, uh, so firstly, in the create user method, it will check uh, that if uh, network ID is present in the data dot attribute map. If it is present, then we are in the portal. That means we are in the partner portal or uh, com customer portal. So now we are taking one account where name is S Force. So uh, it it can be any account. Now uh, we are creating one contact for uh, uh, since this would be a new user so we have to create one new contact after we create a new contact uh, we are creating a user we are giving in the profile as partner community user then we are giving the username we have the email we have the first name last name 
and some default settings then we are uh, linking the contact to the user and then we are just returning that user otherwise if uh, we don't have the network id then we are not in portal so we are just giving uh, creating the user using the standard user profile and uh, giving the default details so this class is getting called and it is creating or updating the user now i'll show you which user got created when i logged into that community So if I go to the user, so this user got created, right? And uh, the user license is partner community, profile is partner community user. This is the contact it is associated to, right? And uh, now uh, if I go to the third party account links uh, related list, so this user is linked to this uh, third party account. So now when this user will log in again, so it will just call the update user method instead of the create user method in the uh, in that auto created handler class. So this is how it is uh, finding out whether to call the create user or the update user method. So, uh, so this was a simple uh, session on social sign on and how to use it with your uh, Salesforce experience cloud and Slack uh, combination of both of them. So hope you like this session and if you want more such videos then subscribe to my channel. Uh, and like the video. Thank you. Thanks everyone for watching the session.